Poland on a Plate is brought to you by Krakus. Krakus, the true imported Polish ham. Welcome to Poland on a Plate. Today's episode is all about mushrooms. I'll be joined by special guest chef, Kevin Hickey of Bottle Fork, as he prepares a delicious potato gnocchi with wild mushrooms. And later I will show you my recipe for zapiakanki using Krakus ham. Poland on a Plate is brought to you by Krakus. Krakus, the true imported Polish ham. Wirtualny portfel PNC dla zobaczenia pełnego obrazu swoich finansów. Dla wiedzy o tym, kiedy pieniędzy ubywa i kiedy ich przybywa. Dla powiadomień o niskim stanie konta nazywamy to Danger Days. Dla zobaczenia swoich pieniędzy w zupełnie nowym świetle odwiedź pncvirtualwallet.com i zobacz wszystko, co wirtualny portfel PNC ma do zaoferowania. PNC Bank. Dla osiągnięć każdego dnia. I'm here with Chef Kevin Hickey of Chicago's hottest new restaurant, Bottle Fork. Welcome, Chef Kevin. Thanks, Basha. It's great to be here. Please tell me a little bit about your restaurant. Oh, well, we're located right in the middle of uh, River North, 441 North Clark, between Hubbard and Illinois. And we're a bar and kitchen is how kind of how we bill ourselves. Okay. And it's all about the marriage of bar and kitchen. We have a huge 40-foot long bar, and the kitchen and bar are not separated in any way. Oh. And one of our big things is we love to mix food and alcohol and alcohol and food and all different kinds of combinations. It's a really fun, lively atmosphere and it's kind of elevated bar food. Very cool. Yeah. So what are we going to be making today? Today we're making gnocchi, which is a classic Italian potato dumpling. But in the current incarnation that we have it in the restaurant, it's all about spring. So it's got stinging nettles and spring mushrooms and fresh cheese. I think you were mentioning that the uh, potato dumpling is similar to a Polish uh, Yeah, in dumpling. Polish we have kopitka. Kopitka, it's... right, which is very similar. So I think we'll try and do a couple different ways of cutting it so we can see the classic and, and the Polish style. All right, well I'm excited to get started. What's our first step? We're going to make the gnocchi. So okay. <laughs> we need to get the gnocchi out of the potatoes, out of the oven, and they're nice and hot. All right, and it looks like you just put them in whole skin and all. Whole skin and all. I like to bake them because the key to gnocchi, you want gnocchi to be really light, really fluffy, not heavy. You know, it, can, it can be kind of thick and heavy yeah. um, when it's a potato-based dish. So if we bake them in the oven, they're going to get cooked with the least amount of moisture. Ah. So if they have a lot of moisture, we're going to have to add more flour. If we add more flour, they're going to be heavier, they're going to be thicker, they're going to be you know, you know sit <laughs> kind of heavy on the stomach or on the plate. So if we bake them like this, they get kind of fluffy and the potato is just potato and we're not going to get any extra water that we don't want. So we split them in half and to get them really kind of fine and fluffy and elegant like I was talking about, we use a potato mill or a ricer or it goes by many different names. It's one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. It's a great way to make really creamy, fluffy mashed potatoes as well. But if you didn't have a ricer at home, you could just use a standard potato masher. Masher is gonna work just get fine. Get your arm workout get in your, for the get day. Your, <laughs> get your uh, little cardio, little exercise there. Yeah. Um, you could shred them even. You could use a, a box shredder. Oh, that's an idea. Yeah, yeah. Maybe wait for them to cool. You, you have like cool, iron you fingers do, here. You do want them still here. Feel that you still want them hot. Though. You want to work with it hot. It's not. I like to work with them. Right. I like to work with them almost right out of the oven. Um, that way, they seem to stay the fluffiest, and they don't absorb any moisture, and the moisture from the skin doesn't go in. And uh, by the time we get to the point where we're going to make our dough, it'll still be warm, um, but it won't be hot. These are these are hot potatoes, as they say right now. <laughs> by the time we get to the dough, they won't be too hot. They'll just be some nice warm dough, which is. Amazing. Should I start milling? Yeah, start going All for right. it. And then you go back the other way, and it kind of pulls it up. Oh, that's and then awesome! It, yeah. But then, how do you get it off of the plate? <laughs> <laughs> 
That's a really... There we go. That's our chef's trick for milling. Okay, I think we're good. All right. So then we'll scrape off what's on the bottom. So then we'll take the potatoes and put them here. One of our most popular dishes. I could just live on potatoes. There's so much you can do with them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Would you mind whipping that up for sure. me? Sure. Right. So we use a really nice Italian pasta flour. That uh, very fine flour keeps the gnocchi very supple and soft. So not quite salt. like a pastry dough, but a little bit fine. No, not quite. Not quite. So we're going to pour most of that into our well. And then we're going to start to bring the dough together. So why are you doing this by hand? That way I can feel, ex I do it by hand so I can feel exactly how much flour I need to add. Okay. If I did it by um, machine or by a hook or something like that, I might add more flour to get a better dough. And it's not really about what's better for me, it's what's better for the dough. So I gotta keep feeling the dough to decide how much flour I wanna add. So I need to add quite a bit more flour. Okay. Right on top or I in like your to hands? I wash my hands with it, that's good. <laughs> That way I get everything off of my hands. So do we think that this is good to go? This is just about there. We don't really want to leave anything left on the counter. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it in strips. So we want you to cut like that. Okay. And then we're gonna roll it into ropes and cut it again. It's dry as you think of it. No, it's not. Yeah. Actually cutting so we have into to be careful. It's pretty... So we might need a little more flour, just in a little pile there for us to use if we need it. Perfect. Good? Yeah. So All then right. we'll take it. Take one of these logs away, and I want you to roll it out. A little bit of flour? Well, try rolling it first, okay. and see how much flour you need. This wood cutting board is really, really nice. Really the perfect um, surface to work on, because it, you know, it, it kind of grabs the dough a little bit. If you're doing it right on the counter, the dough's gonna slide a little bit, then you're gonna add more flour, and then yeah. you're gonna add more flour in your gnocchi, and then your gnocchi's gonna be heavier than we wanted it to be. There's two ways to do gnocchi. First, either way starts the same. You're gonna cut about, I don't know, what is that? Is that an inch? Is I use my finger measure. I would say it's an inch. An inch. So <laughs> cut all of those and do an inch. Now, I like them like this, and depending on what you're going to do with them, mm -hmm. you can leave them shaped like this. The traditional style is to take a fork and go like that. Yeah. Really light, not too much pressure. It gives them a shape, but what it also does is it creates these little ridges here. And the Italians are genius engineers, not with actual buildings, but with <laughs> but with food. And they put ridges and lines in their pastas and things like that for a purpose. And that mm -hmm. catches sauce and it catches little ingredients and so on and so forth. So that's why you do that. Okay, so now that you've rolled this one out, why don't we try cutting it in the kopitka style? Oh, kopitka. Kopitka. So on the bias. Mm -hmm. So about the same size, but yeah, have that different very look. Very similar. Yeah. Okay. So now what we're going to do is this is this is where the secret part comes in, because to have these beautiful gnocchi all ready to go in your restaurant kitchen, they're so delicate, perfect. Very hard to manage that in a, in a busy uh, kitchen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what we're going to do we'll sprinkle them with a little bit of flour, so they're a little easier to work with and we're gonna pre-cook them. We're just gonna barely cook them. We've got nice simmering salted water going over there and we're going to drop them in a few at a time and when they float, they're ready. All right, so Basha, now when the, they're floating, yeah. they're all ready to go. So we're gonna take them out and we're just gonna put them in a nice shallow dish so they're not piled up on top of each other. And then you're gonna take that beautiful olive oil over there mm -hmm. and take and just drizzle a little bit over them. Okay. This is gonna give them some great flavor, and it's also gonna keep them from sticking to each other. You get a little bit on there, and then we'll just shake them up, and they're ready to go. So you can refrigerate, you know, cover those with plastic, put a little slash in the plastic so the steam gets out, and put them in the fridge, or leave them out on the counter for a couple hours before you're ready to finish the dish. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Chef Kevin. Can't wait to see what's going to happen to these little milky next. Absolutely. Poland on a Plate is brought to you by Krakus. Krakus, the true imported Polish ham.
we're back with Chef Kevin, and now we're going to be talking about mushrooms. What's next, Chef? Well, we're going to talk about different kinds of mushrooms, but really, to be honest with you, I had this idea of bringing all different kinds of mushrooms, uh -huh. and then the king of mushrooms came to the back door. <laughs> and, I and these are morels, resist. correct? These are morels. These are the first fresh morels that I've seen this year. Big difference between cultivated and wild mushrooms. You can't cultivate morels, so you can't grow them in your basement or grow them in a hydroponic farm or any sort of little farm situation. They only come wild which is why they're so wonderful, why they're so expensive, and why they're so rare. So we're gonna take our paring knife, and we're gonna pick up each mushroom. We're gonna cut off the very bottom, and with some of them, we're gonna cut them in half once, and you always wanna cut it in half to make sure we don't have any worms. Because these are a wild foraged mushroom. These are not a cultivated mushroom. And then we're gonna cut them in half again, so they're the perfect fork size. The great thing about mushrooms, and the reason that uh, we, we like to eat them and use them in so many different recipes, is that they're a great substitute for meat. If you take a big, thick slice of portobello and you sear it really hard on both sides, it's like eating a steak. So these have already been cleaned for us, too. These are some really beautiful oyster mushrooms, nice and thick and fat. Kind of look like an oyster shell, yeah, almost. Yeah, exactly. So we want a really nice hot heat really high, high, like we're searing a piece of meat. And then we're gonna add our oil. And you wanna use a really simple oil, don't use anything too expensive or too exciting. You want something neutral. When you're cooking at a really high heat with a really high smoke point, you want an oil that's not gonna have much flavor. We add our mushrooms. I don't like to add too much else, depending on the recipe. You know, I don't wanna add, I don't wanna add uh, onions or garlic at this point. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt because salt at every stage is important when you're cooking. And we'll put them in there, and then you put them in the refrigerator and they're ready to go. One more oil, and we start the process again with the oyster mushrooms. They take a little bit longer. That umami, that, that thick, yeah. rich, meaty, juicy uh, element, don't crowd the pan, don't put too much in. That's true with anything, mm -hmm. but particularly with mushrooms, if you put too many mushrooms in, they're not gonna, all be hitting that cooking surface, so they're not all gonna get that sear. They're gonna crowd each other, and then the, the ones on the bottom might get a sear, but then the ones on the top are gonna get slowly hot, and then they're gonna drop that water and ruin everything. You can almost smell the caramelization that you're yeah. starting to see on the mushrooms. Yeah, everything, thanks to God, everything has sugar in it. <laughs> Again, there's not an ounce of liquid in this pan, which is what we want. So we've cooked them nice, now we'll go back over here, and we're done. All right, Chef, I understand you have some special ingredients for us today. We do, we have two really unique things. One was a lot like our morels, we have foragers who work with us. One of our foragers brings us stinging nettles on a fairly regular basis. But he showed up yesterday and brought us some beautiful ramps as well. Now both of these are items that cannot be cultivated again. They grow wild in the forests of Illinois, Michigan, Poland, Indiana, Poland. <laughs> I understand that it's a, a popular thing for um, Polish citizens to go out into the, the fields and, and go foraging for mushrooms and nettles. And nettles are, are, are very storied throughout time. You go back and you can do a lot of research on nettles and find that they, they come up in, in ancient cookbooks, going back to medieval times and stews and soups and so on and so forth. But they're not spiky. Well, they're stinging. not necessarily <laughs> spiky. There's kind of a misconception yeah. that they're stinging nettles. So how are they stinging? So many people think that it's got little little stingers or little prickers on it, uh -huh. little thistly like thing, and that's what stings your hand. The, the reality is that it releases an oil that irritates the skin. So the oil, once it gets on your skin, feels as though either your hand's falling asleep or it burns. But once you cook them, that oil is gone. So when you touch them when they're raw, you should wear gloves. So if you're out in the fields and you can pick them up and you're not going to have any, any issues, we're going to put on gloves to clean them. All right. And we just pull the leaves off. It's like cleaning spinach or, or Swiss chard. Or, like slightly or, anticipating a stinging feeling. Not going to happen. <laughs> You can, we can make it happen if you want. I no, guess. no, no! Good, I wore the long sleeves too, so you can't get me. So we're gonna do a classic blanching of our nettles. All right, so we have our ice So that pot bath. should be close to boiling, or just about perfect, actually, perfect. We'll throw a little salt in there. 
Seasoning the water. Ooh. Season our water, and then we're gonna throw our leaves in there. But once they go in here, now all of the nastiness is gone. And we clean up the leaves, we blanch them, we shock them in ice water, we blend them, puree, put those in bags and freeze it. And then whenever we want stinging nettles, we just pull a bag out and we go. Same thing with ramps. Now ramps are only available for about eight weeks throughout the year. Again, you're gonna find them on the forest floor. It's technically is a wild baby leek. So it has a very mild oniony flavor, um, but you know, foragers find them by smelling it. They can smell it as they're walking through the uh, forest, which is funny, that's kind of how Chicago got its name, was from these onions. These onions used to grow wild on the banks of the Chicago River, and the Indians referred to their aroma and everything as Chicago, and that eventually evolved into Chicago. We'll throw some in with our, uh, with our gnocchi and mushrooms today to just kind of show them off. But mostly what we do is we'll cut them right about here. We'll take these leafy green parts and we'll blanch them, we'll shock them, we'll puree them, bag them up, put them in the freezer. And then anytime we want to have a leek, you know, have a, a ramp risotto or a ramp sauce or something like that, we'll uh -huh. just pull a bag out and we can do that. All right. Well, when we come back, we'll be putting this whole dish together. Poland on a Plate is brought to you by Krakus. Krakus, the true imported Polish ham. Welcome back to Poland on a Plate. During this segment, I will feature a delicious recipe using Krakus, the true imported Polish ham. Now I'd like to show you how to make a very popular Polish street food called zapiekanka. It's kind of like an open-faced pizza sandwich. Have over here, my pan heated, I've added a little bit of oil, some chopped shallots, and some cherry tomatoes. Traditionally, zapiakanka are served with mushrooms, cheese, ham, and a ketchup. Ours is going to be a little bit more gourmet since we're using this roasted cherry tomato vinaigrette in its place. Now that it's been cooking for just a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and add some extra virgin olive oil. I did about two spoonfuls of that. And then I have some red wine vinegar. All right, and our sauce is done. How easy is that? Now we're gonna come back over here. I have a French baguette that I've cut into four pieces and then sliced in half lengthwise. We're going to start with our Krakus ham. I have the thinly sliced original variety here. You can also use the reduced sodium or honey Polish ham. Since we are preparing a traditional Polish snack, it's important to use Krakus, a naturally cured Polish ham made in the old world style. At the deli counter, you can request to have your ham sliced in a variety of ways, cubed or in thick slices that will give you great taste and presentation. Now additionally on the stove, I had some mushrooms that I'd sliced up, sauteed in a little bit of oil with some salt and pepper just until they start to get tender and a little bit brown. Take those and put them right on top of our ham. Now we have our Asiago cheese. I'm using an Asiago cheese because it has a little bit of sharpness to it. It's also mild. It'll go really nice with the flavors that we have going here and it's not going to overwhelm the beautiful flavor of Krakus ham. I'm going to grab a sheet pan. Along with the prep work on this being very quick, the cooking is also very quick. All you're going to be doing is popping them under the broiler for about five to seven minutes, just until that cheese starts to melt and the ham gets just a little bit of toastiness and brownness on the edges. There's no need for oil in the pan. The bread's already baked, so it has that crust to it. It's not gonna stick, It'll be perfectly fine. All right. There we have it, and into the oven we go. Now it's been five minutes, and these are ready to come out of the oven. As you can see, they have a really great brownness to them, and the cheese has melted nicely. Now, for the final touch. Traditionally, zapiakanka are topped with ketchup. To make ours a little bit more gourmet, we started out with a roasted cherry tomato and shallot vinaigrette. So I'm just gonna top a little bit right on here. Take a little bit more of the juice just to put right on the top there. And now for a little bit 
of extra green color and fresh herb flavor, I have some chopped chives. And there you have it. This is my Krakus ham, Zapia Kanka. You can find these and other great Krakus recipes on our website at polandonaplate.com and find Krakus ham at fine delis near you. Bon appetit, or as we say in Polish, smacznego. Poland on a Plate is brought to you by Krakus. Krakus, the true imported Polish ham. So now we're assembling Chef Kevin's potato gnocchi with mild mushrooms, a twist on a Polish classic, kofitka. Well, we're gonna take those nettles that we blanched and shocked earlier, and we're gonna make a puree out of them. A little bit of the water from the uh, blanching is okay, or from the, the shocking water, because we're gonna need um, some liquid so that it blends better. And you see we've kept that beautiful green color. Now, yeah. we won't strain this one, even though it's a little thick and chunky. In the interest of time and through the magic of television, we have a beautifully pureed, <laughs> stinging nettle puree right there. We're going to turn our heat on here. All right. And we have a very simple mixture of uh, shallots, garlic, and cream that we've cooked slightly, chilled down, and that's ready to go. And we'll put about a, a third of that into that pan okay. for, for what we need. And we'll get that nice and hot. And then we'll finish it with our ramp puree. I'm sorry, no, actually, stinging nettle puree, but it could be a ramp puree. It could. It could. We talked about that we before. We talked about that before, exactly. All right, so while this is heating up, what's the next thing that we should work on? We're gonna get the big pan hot. That's getting nice and hot for us. And this pan's getting hot, and we're gonna add a little bit of butter. Just a little. Just a little, a knob of butter. You wanna get the butter really melted and starting to turn color for you a little bit. And the great thing is we can cook it all in butter at a high heat because everything's already cooked. So this is starting to come to a simmer. So we're gonna add our puree. Ooh, spoon, yeah. Spoon there, I like all the all green in. and the white color. You know, the cream mutes it a little bit, but you can still tell it has that vibrant green yeah, color. It's giving a flavor taste. Maybe just a hint of salt? Yeah, but I think we're on the right track. I don't think we need any pepper because we've got that flavor. So oh. now, look at that's beautiful. Our butter is starting brown. to turn a little brown. So we're gonna add our gnocchi. So as we were talking about before, you can boil them and then fry them later. Yeah, absolutely. Add a little more salt. A little pepper. The big boy pepper the grinder. Big boy. <laughs> we don't do it small. Oh wow! Yeah, that's gorgeous. Nice gorgeous. color on there, and we'll throw these uh, leeks in there with there. Just or not leeks? Well, they are leeks. Yeah, the the baby there. leeks, the ramps. Baby leeks, exactly. We'll add the mushrooms in a little bit. So are we going to be cutting these ramps no, down? No, we're not. We we're going to we're just going to lay them on top, all beautiful like they are. We don't want to lose anything. So we got beautiful color and texture on our gnocchi now. And we can add our mushrooms. See how they puff up? I love that. Yeah. That's my favorite thing. Add all our mushrooms in there. Big toss. Let that cook for a little bit more. And then we'll take our sauce, which is beautiful, green, stinging nettle sauce. That won't sting us anymore. It won't, no, it's perfectly safe. We'll pour a nice amount in there. And then I'll grab that big serving spoon back from you. My favorite one. <laughs> we we get our favorite utensils in the oh, kitchen. We can't I, live I have that them. too. <laughs> we can't live without them. That's beautiful. A beautiful ramp there. And then we'll just put a little crumbled fresh goat cheese. And so this is how it's served at the restaurant. All right, well, I'm gonna have to give this a taste. I'm gonna get some of the morel and the gnocchi. Don't forget the, oh, you got the goat cheese. And I got Perfect. the goat cheese, Perfect. yeah. It's really wonderful. It, the mushrooms still have that, like the umami, the it's chewiness, so the meatiness. Meaty, crunchy. And, and yeah. that cheese just gives it the perfect little kick of acidity, the sourness. Yeah. Thank you, Chef Kevin. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed learning all about mushrooms and the different preparations of gnocchi. If you want to find recipes from today's program, they're on our website at polandonaplate.com 
or you can head to Chef Kevin's Restaurant Bottle Fork in River North. At 441 North Clark. And you can try it for yourself and have it brought right to your table. Bon appetit, or as we say in Polish, smacznego. Wirtualny portfel PNC dla zupełnie nowego sposobu widzenia swoich finansów, dla organizowania zakupów z karty debetowej i kredytowej, a nawet rachunków, dla widzenia wydatków w danej kategorii lub w danym miesiącu, co pozwala ustalić budżet i otrzymywać powiadomienia, kiedy zbliżasz się do limitu, dla zobaczenia, jak wirtualny portfel PNC może pomóc zarządzać pieniędzmi w jednym, łatwym w użyciu miejscu, odwiedź pncvirtualwallet.com. PNC Bank dla osiągnięć każdego dnia. Poland on a Plate is brought to you by Krakus. Krakus, the true imported Polish ham. You can find recipes from today's program on our website at polandonaplate.com. Bon appetit, or as we say in Polish, smacznego.